This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to be looking at some viewer mail, work submitted by viewers like you, some awesome photography that we've got lined up today. Before we get going though, I've got some announcements that I'm going to make in the next week, so please stay tuned. If you haven't signed up for the email list yet, I'm gonna put a link below in the description below this video. Um, we've got some workshops that are coming up that I'm really excited about. We've got a zines thing that we're gonna do, which is gonna be online based, and then there's also an in-person workshop. So please stay tuned in the next week or so, I'm gonna be talking about that, but let's get to some books and zines today. Okay, so first up, this is kind of a heavy project here, and it's something that's really special and really cool that I wanna share with you guys. This comes to us from a gentleman named David Stanhill. You might be saying, Ted, you're holding the book backwards. I'm actually not. This is written in Hebrew. This is a really quite an interesting concept. David has a note. I'm going to read part of this to you. He writes, Hi, Ted. My name is David Stanhill, a keen amateur photographer of many years. I've been following your YouTube channel for several years. I really enjoy it. I find it inspiring. I would like to share with you my latest photo book. I would appreciate your feedback. About three years ago, I started visiting the tomb of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yoche at Marin, Israel as part of a photo project. The flexibility of working mainly from home since the outbreak of COVID-19 allowed me to pop over there whenever I had some free time. All in all, I visited about 60 times over two and a half years. I was fascinated by the diversity of those attracted to the holy site of the tomb. I got to know and befriended many of the regular dwellers, some of whom are beggars, others homeless. All of them have chosen to break away from a normative way of life, spending most of their time at the tomb site, sleeping in tents or nearby or in the woods surrounding the site. In this self-published book, I wish to depict those quote-unquote friends of Rabbi Shimon in a non-judgmental and empathetic manner. I made an artistic choice to present the portraits in an almost black and white duotone and add color images showing the surroundings in the atmosphere at the site. The text passages within the book are quotes from the Kabbalistic canonical text, the Zohar attributed to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yoche. I selected the sections in which the friends of Rabbi Shimon are praised for their virtues. As the book is in Hebrew, it should be read from back to front. Best wishes and thanks for your time, David. So David, this is really impressive work. And what I love the most about it is that you have a concept that you saw through. But what strikes me as really interesting is it probably started as one thing and then started becoming an obsession and turned into something different entirely. And something I don't really do much on the show when we get into existentialism or religion or anything like that, I really don't talk a lot about that. But I think one thing that's really interesting to me is going to quote unquote visit the rabbi. You found this whole other personality of personas and people that were there. What fascinates me about this is like, I remember when I was a lot younger and the first time that I lost a really close loved one. And that was one thing that helped me through it was when I was able to see that their presence is felt in other ways, and it's usually echoed in the people behind the surroundings that you realize that people don't really go in that sense. So I really love this. It's a really special book, and uh, man, thank you for sending. I will put a link to David's website as well as everybody else in the show description below, so make sure you check it out. So awesome work, David. Thank you for sharing. All right, so next up, a complete change of pace. This is really wild and really well done. This is a zine that comes to us on newsprint. I've done newsprint zines before, and I'm always fascinated by these. Anyway, this comes to us from Alexandre Morelli. He also goes by Alex. Alex enclosed a note, which reads, Hi, Ted. I have been watching your channel for at least four years. and I'm a big fan. I like it because you know how to vary the different subjects that deal with photography. I am sending you my latest self-published project called Balneotherapy. Actually, I spent a month last summer in the south of France, during which I produced a series of photographs of the region, in particular the little port of Les Brusques. It's a place which is a little off the beaten track in terms of mass tourism. Of course, holiday makers do come here for the peak season, but in smaller numbers than they would in neighboring resorts. Perhaps it had something to do with the fact that the wind blows harder in this area. It was on the basis of images that I produced, I began working on a project for publishing. It's a photographic record of wanderings where we come across camouflaged frogmen, a cactus in a terracotta pot, plastic buoys, a knitted bucket hat, the reclining bodies of sunbathers on the beach, a bird of paradise, a dusted covered rock chick, the hands of a fisherman who catches scorpion fish. I show holiday makers in their summer outfits bathing, whether it's out in the sun or in the sea, these photos are presented in a diptych. They respond to each other through similarities, motifs, transitions, and continuity of meaning. I hope this 40-page newspaper will hold your attention. 
Keep talking about photography, I need it. Best regards, Alex. So Alex, this is absolutely awesome. I love it, I love the newsprint. I think that there's something about your style of photography that's kind of quirky in its own way, and I mean that as a compliment. And the way that this is just presented really big and in newsprint like this, I think it really complements the medium. I also love the typography that goes on through here. This is really well designed, it's really well done, and it's different, and I love things that are different, and I would love to visit this area sometime. It looks absolutely trippy. Uh, so anyway, I wanna thank you for sending. Check out Alex's link in the show description below. I really dig this. And speaking of things that are different, I've got some things that are very different coming up, but Real quick, I wanna give a shout out to our sponsor today, the always awesome folks over at Squarespace. How easy is it to build an amazing website in a matter of minutes? Squarespace has you covered, it's dead simple. Head over to Squarespace, hit get started. You can start by selecting from an impressive collection of customizable templates, or you can do what I do, build your own. Something unique because, you know, you're not like other websites. Give your site a name. Next, you can build your homepage. We'll start with a few preset layouts just to get us going. Want to sell products like books or prints? Well, you can feature those on your homepage. Create a few more sections if you want. Let's also give it a color palette. There's a whole bunch to choose from and just get us started. We can change this all later. Next, let's select the typography choices. Welcome to your website. Everything is set up and it's all ready for you to customize. Squarespace is built on Fluid Engine, the next generation of website design. Select Edit and Fluid Engine allows you to drag, place, and resize any element on the page. You can snap these to a grid, you can make them float on top of one another, you can freeform however you like. You can even preview and adjust how the site looks on either desktop or mobile. The layouts are independent. Of course, you'll want a portfolio for your work, Creating an image gallery is as easy as dropping a folder of images on your web browser. Once uploaded, you can drag to resort, customize the look, and Squarespace writes all of the code for you. Everything just works and it looks fabulous. Want to sell your own prints, books, or zines? Squarespace has the capabilities to not only set up your online store and collect payments, but they also give you all the tools that you're gonna need to be successful. Managing shipping and payment options, manage your orders and engage with your customers, they even give you the tax tools that you need to keep things organized and stay compliant. You should try Squarespace for yourself. It's absolutely free, no credit card required. Just go to squarespace.com AOP, sign up for that free trial. If you decide Squarespace is right for you, I can save you an additional 10% on your order by using offer code AOP on checkout. That's right, the code is AOP. So stop procrastinating, go build your website today and I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. All right, so speaking of things that are different, we're gonna move over to Australia right now. This comes to us from Peter Kennedy. Uh, this is an interesting project. It comes with a t-shirt here that I'll explain in a second and a couple images of ravens. And of course, Peter also includes a note which makes sense of this thing, and it's very interesting. I wanna read part of this to you. He says, hello, Ted, I hope this letter finds you well. Last summer, Wendy and I did a UK road trip for a few weeks, and we managed to visit the Tower of London. There are six resident ravens at the tower, and King Charles II provided protection for them. There's a prophecy that should the ravens leave the kingdom will fall. This photo sat for some time in my catalog before I started working on it in post, and last week, I had it printed by a small local t-shirt company with the enclosed t-shirt. I hope it fits. I think that's gonna do it. I think that we should explore all types of mediums to publish our work, and I've decided using my own wardrobe to display my works rather than an, an advertisement for the latest sports or leisure brand. Amen to that, Peter. This is awesome, and I think it's a really cool way to show your work. Never even thought of getting t-shirts made. So, uh, man, thanks for the shirt and the prints. Peter, this is awesome. Next up, we have this cool little zine, which comes to us from Gary Brown in Edinburgh, Scotland. He just wrote on the envelope, little zine from Edinburgh. Hope you enjoy GB. Gary states in the intro here, so this is a little zine about people sitting on benches. Benches are like little photo booths where people are comfortable and relaxed and usually open up to the idea of having their picture taken. It's not always the case, but it usually is. I regard these as portraits. I don't know if you want to think of it as street photography. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'll go with that moniker. I guess it's not landscapes. 
Most of these were shot over the last couple years, mostly in Edinburgh, which some Glasgow and Paris thrown in for good measure. Most of them I asked permission, but not all, just as when the situation arises. All on film, home developed and scanned, but that's really not that important. Enjoy Gary. Gary, this is really nicely done, and I think the takeaway that I hope people get from this is it's, it's a really cool concept, and sometimes if you're going to do a book, it doesn't have to be this big, heady, uh, you know, earth-shattering, revelationary kind of concept. It can be something simple as people sitting on benches. And I love the whole idea of committing oneself to the project of photographing people on benches just to see what kind of variations and things you come up with. So, uh, Gary, very interesting, very trippy. I love it. Thanks for sending. I'll link it up below so uh, you guys check it out. All right, so next up is this book called Misplacements. I love the typography in the uh, title there. This comes to us from a gentleman and I'm going to try to pronounce this. He's from Slovenia. This is from Gregor Radoncic. And Gregor includes this note, which reads, Dear Ted, I'm a photographer who is living and working in Slovenia, a Central European country caught between the Alps and the Adriatic Sea. Let me just briefly explain the background of this project presented in the enclosed photo book. As a landscape photographer, I try to look at landscapes in a different, unconventional way. Namely, landscapes, if we pay attention, also tell us a lot about ourselves and our relationship with the natural environment. It took me 12 12 years to complete this series, and that is now finally presented in the form of a photo book. These photographs question how we interact with the natural environment by placing isolated man-made objects of different forms and functions into a particular landscape. The functions of most of the objects photographed in this series have already been lost. For some of them, it seems that this will happen in the near future. By losing their physical context or purpose, the former placements become misplacements. The concept of this series is thus focused on the phenomenon of the man's placement of the artificial in nature and how it changes the identity of the landscape and the natural environment. I'm looking forward to watch your next videos with kind regards, Gregor. So, Gregor, this is really nicely done, and it also has a real handmade quality to it that I really like if you guys can't tell so he has the uh, the cover and the back cover are on cardboard and then he has stitching on the side has a really nice physical effect I really love the way this book is done so congratulations on your design the layout is very unconventional too I think that your photographs are very modern uh, and I think it has a very contemporary feel to it when you put things close to the edges like this nothing is lost in the gutter and I think it speaks highly to the images too I love the idea that you're going for something very different with landscape photography uh, your work has an interesting feel to it that reminds me at times of maybe Thomas Strude or somebody like that but definitely not a clone of his work it, you have your own voice in here and you do something different. I love the concept of the man-made objects that are essentially disintegrating within the landscape and then how we think about that change over time. This is really well done. I will put a link to Gregor's work in the description below. Gregor, thanks for sharing. This is awesome. So we have a wide range of stuff that's been sent in, not only in concept, but also in the medium and delivery. And this is kind of leads me into what I want to talk about. Many of you have been asking me if I'm going to be doing workshops on zines. I've gotten a lot of questions since I've done these videos on, you know, how do I get a book produced? How do I work with a printer? How do I come up with an idea? Idea, what kinds of stuff do I need to think about? And this workshop will address everything. It's a workshop we're going to do on Zoom. And uh, I'm going to make the announcement in the next week or so. So please stay tuned. And I would recommend highly that you sign up for the email list. I'll put a link in the show description below. And so uh, check that out because it's where we'll be announcing first. And then I'll do it in videos as well. So um, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys can attend that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and a lot of cool stuff coming up. So I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.